The extension program reaches all 67 Florida counties, and IFAS research covers areas from family planning to entomology. When the Open Arms Village eventually opens, it hopes to hold up to 30 people. Hap's execution also marks a change in Florida's capital punishment procedure. He is the first inmate to be executed using the drug mitazolam hydrochloride, a move which is raising questions in regards to cruel and unusual punishment. While Bring the Harvest Home is helping during the holiday months, it's just the first step in keeping the pantry stocked year-round. The Child Advocacy Group of Gainesville coordinates the efforts of law enforcement, DCF, and medical teams in order to provide child abuse victims with a safe space. I was, I was sensitive and uh, I really wanted to be alone and I got to the point where I, I wanted to just end it. Uh, and then this dog, God brought this dog into my life within three weeks and then another three weeks he was mine permanently. And uh, I still have my ups and downs, but he really keeps me grounded. Ray Galmish served two and a half tours of duty in Vietnam and served in the Army for 20 years. About 15 years ago, his post-traumatic stress disorder became more severe. He started having more flashbacks, having nightmares, waking up in cold sweats, and suffering from panic attacks when he went out in public. For Ray, having Dazzle, his service dog, around when he goes out is a necessity. There were times when I'd go to like the clothing section or something like that, and I'd start to kind of freak out a little bit, and he'd pull me over to a corner. He would literally pull me with the leash, and I'd try to keep him to get him to come back and stay, you know, close like that. What he does is he gets me to, to pet on him, starts loving on me, and he does it with this thing with the paws. Hush, hush. Good boy, good boy. Okay. And uh, and then what he does is he he he, he 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 makes me get down and pet on him and love on him and and let him lick me for a while. And after a few minutes, I'm okay, and then we can just go ahead and go about our business. Good boy, good boy. The week we came home with Dazzle, we went out to dinner. I mean, that was unheard of. We went to the mall. We went, he went grocery shopping with me, which isn't a thrill, but you know, it's something he didn't do before. Whenever Dazzle goes out with Ray, Dazzle wears a vest identifying himself <laughs> as a service dog. But that doesn't stop Ray from getting asked if Dazzle is a real service dog. Ray says he had an incident like this with a greeter at his local Walmart. He was making me very nervous and it was almost to the point where I just didn't want to go in there anymore. The incident is a result of a growing number of dishonest dog owners who are buying vests so they can pass their pets off as service dogs and take them into stores, restaurants, and even on airplanes. Carol Borden is the executive director of Guardian Angel Medical Service Dogs. Uh, that is actually illegal and uh, it's actually a huge insult to people that do have true disabilities and people like ourselves that work very hard to train dogs to be appropriate in public settings. This right here is an example of an imposter service dog vest that anyone can buy online for about $50. It also comes with these cards right here which show the le actual legal rights of real service dogs. Borden says that the way to tell an imposter dog from a real service dog is that they are usually behaving badly and don't have any manners. The Americans with Disabilities Act says that those entering businesses with animals can be asked just two questions. Is this a service dog and what is it trained to do for you? Since nothing is truly required, you cannot ask for paperwork, certification, they don't have to be identified by a vest, by a bandana, by anything. So that leaves the merchants at a complete loss. Borden's suggestion is to institute a testing system with vest and certification licensing done by the state. Unfortunately, this plan comes with legal complications. It can't be done. We've proposed it to the state already. Uh, the state reviewed it. They love the idea, but it's in direct violation of federal law. It makes it harder for me emotionally to 
to have these things happen because it's, it, it, it triggers me. And uh, then I have to go through a calming period and Dazzle and I have to take walks and, and feel good outside the facility before I can go back in. Borden says that owners of imposter dogs may not think of what they do as disrespectful to those with disabilities, but they need to. Ariana Lipkin, WUFT News. In the early summer of 1986, a 21-year-old Angela Crowley stopped to make a call at a convenience store in Crystal River. There, she was kidnapped, raped, and murdered by a man named William Happ. After more than 27 years, Happ was executed at Florida State Prison near Star. As he was about to be put to death, Happ apologized for the murder and asked for forgiveness from Crowley's family. Uh, the one question I always had, and I think we've all had, is why? You know, and that was the one part of it that, you know, wasn't answered. But um, he took responsibility for it. Um, the apology, you know, for what it's worth, uh, you know, I personally think that was probably more for himself than anything. Hap's execution also marks a change in Florida's capital punishment procedure. He is the first inmate to be executed using the drug mitazolam hydrochloride, a move which is raising questions in regards to cruel and unusual punishment. It took 14 minutes until Hap was pronounced dead, double the typical time with the old drug. The change in injection chemicals comes after the European manufacturer of the previous drug used in the lethal injection process stopped shipping it out to prisons for executions. What can happen as an unintended consequence is to happen to other beneficial medicines that have been used to kill people in executions is that the new regulations will come into effect from the manufacturer and from where they're in Europe where they're manufactured where it can cause a six month delay and a shortage of these vitally important medications that are used day in and day out in surgery centers and hospitals to help people and yet because Florida now is choosing to kill people with it it can be in short supply for thousands of people that really need this medication. Hap chose a box of assorted chocolates and a quart and a half of German chocolate ice cream for his last meal. Florida will continue to use its new lethal injection cocktail for upcoming executions.